Okay, we're going to get started on this carburetor today. We're going to try to get away with just removing the top part and leaving the bottom and the base in here. Because what we're really looking at is why is the float sticking and why is the accelerator plunger not working. And we should be able to access both of those issues from up top. I actually do have another episode that will come out later uh, with more electrical work on this van but I wanted to give people a break from that because electrical can be kind of dry so I figured I'll do this first and release this so we have a little more meat in the uh, lineup oops I just dropped the little clip that goes off of this. I'll never find that again. Probably went all the way down to the ground. Some years back, I had bought another Valiant off of a young man. It had a slant six in it. He couldn't get it running. And, uh, unfortunately, I guess he didn't have anybody to show him the ropes on working on old cars. He had a new carburetor in it or I should say a replacement rebuild, but it was a store-bought one. And since he didn't get the car running, he opened it up. And it was a card or two, just like this. 
and he tightened the screws on it so badly it broke off one or two of these tabs. I think it was like the front one up here. Took a chunk of the bowl out with it. And he had JB welded it back together. And the ones that he didn't break, the tabs were just badly mutilated over. So basically a rebuilt carb that was garbage. It turned out the main problem with the car, or the engine anyway, was the uh, in the distributor. Probably just points and condenser, but I didn't get into it because he had a, a new distributor in the trunk of the car that he hadn't put in yet. So I just stabbed the whole thing in there. And it ran, but it ran poorly because of how damaged the carburetor was. Should still have that carburetor somewhere. If I do, I can put a little footage of that in here too, because I might want to find that just to see if it still has that little clip that I lost on this one. So at least the young guy was trying, but. Obviously, uh, it helps if you got somebody to show you the basics. Uh, my gasket came out in two pieces, so hopefully I got one for that. take this out so I can clean it up. This carburetor comes in three pieces so there's the uh, air horn that we just pulled off that has the choke on it. Then there's the body of it and then the base is right underneath it. So this is obviously ready to come out anyway. Um, just have to disconnect the uh, vacuum advance for the distributor and the fuel line. bring it into the shop and clean that broken gasket and try to find a replacement. There's fortunately only two check balls in these carters. There's one down in that passage right there and then the next one is under the accelerator plunger oh yeah that's garbage I have those two used ones that we found in that earlier video soaking in two-stroke oil right now two-stroke fuel right now hoping to soften it up and the other one is right down there so those both can and will fall out if you turn it over I think at some models the one down here is encapsulated, if I remember correctly. They put a little screen over it. This one here will always fall out, so I've got to be careful with that one. Alright, we're going to 
regroup in the little shop. So. Looks like it might have been just as well that it came apart anyway. Is this passage where this ball was had a lot of gasket debris in it and this end looks like it's just dissolved. Of course there's no passage on that side so it might not have mattered anyway. The screws have so much tar on them they don't want to come out. The carburetor actually looks pretty decent. There's a little debris at the bottom but no corrosion or that varnish that you get from the ethanol. But yeah, that's uh, pretty wasted. So I got the two used ones over here. That's going to be a lot better than that other one. Yeah, either one of them will be an improvement. Because this front is so thin and there's so much distance between the screw holes, even when these are 100% operating, it's not uncommon to see a little wet, kind of like how it looks now. Plus you can even get a little saturation just traveling up through here. So as long as you're not leaking in these Carter BBSs, you know, a little wetness like that's not a problem. Okay, so that's the one check ball. And it looks like the other one may be gone, which is also not uncommon. Yeah, I'm not seeing it down there. Those kits might have that as well. So here's kind of a handy feature on these uh, carters is you can service the uh, needle and seat without even opening the carburetor. This piece here is just the hard fuel line but then this brass piece here on screw from the carburetor So there's the needle right there and the seat. So you can work on that without even opening the carburetor. There's supposed to be a gasket right there.
Yeah, a little bit of muck down there. Not seeing why the float was uh, not shutting the fuel off. It's not full. And that needle looks good. I guess might have just been a speck of dirt in there. Float level looks good. Of course if I find that washer that's going to change the float level a little bit because that's going to pull the needle and seat back the uh, width, the thickness of that washer. As it sits, it is working. So I'm just going to give everything a, a douse without tearing it in, into it any further. I know that's taking a risk, but we didn't hear the thing run. It was running fine other than no accelerator pump and then later on started flooding. And if I have other problems, you've seen it's actually a pretty easy carburetor to tear apart. So there's the power valve. And the emulsion tube will be under there. Yep, I can see through it. Okay, I'm going to go clean this up a bit and then dig around in my parts, see what I can find. I won't take you along for that. And uh, when I come back, well, I should have some cleaner parts and ready for reassemble. Alright, I got us some parts, guys. And I did what I should have done last time and ash canned all the kits for carburetors that I do not have anymore. And then I marked the ones that I do have, so I don't have to dig them all out again. Okay. Alright, so, I've got us everything we're needing here. I found a good replacement gasket. I found the fiber washer that goes on that. I found the missing check ball and even had I used one of those little spring clips that I lost. So we should be ready to go back together. This is what I was talking about earlier. Some models, probably later models. Oh, it looks like it actually fit down there. You could probably add it. I see some tabs down there that this would hold into. But anyway, this is what they used to encapsulate this check ball. So that would ride under there and you can't lose it. Okay. So, first thing we'll do is rob the spring off of our old dead accelerator plunger. And I think this one looked the best. Yeah, maybe not. That's a pretty tight fit. I 
If it's too tight, it's not going to move on its own. And I think it's it's freeing itself up. Let's check the other one. That's a better fit. I think I'll use the other one. Okay. Put our check ball in there. Our spring. And our other check ball goes down there. And our float goes in there. This is a little retaining clip for the float. Just goes into those notches there and holds the float pin down. And then we're putting our needle back in here along with our new washer. definitely higher so we have to bend this tab back make up for that washer thickness okay. there's specific heights to adjust that to in fact uh, most of these kits come with not, yeah, here we go. They come with these gauges and you look up your specific application and then you adjust the float to where when it's raised it comes in contact with whichever, see they got sizes on there, 736, 932nd, quarter, 516, so whichever one your application calls for you can adjust it to that but just generically speaking if it's closing the needle when the floats are about halfway that's going to work <coughs> okay so I'm going to check everything's back on there and you want to make sure this is oriented properly because you can put it upside down but it's not going to work right well, you'd have to work hard to put that upside down, but I'm sure somebody could manage. But anyway, you just look for like that big hole there, and there's that square hole there. And you're golden. Now there's a cap here that usually comes out. So, yeah, there we go. So usually you'll put that on top of that spring. We don't have to worry about linkages because I took all the linkages off in the vehicle. So I will be reassembling that part of it inside the truck. We're actually not going to be able to tighten anything right now because these four long ones in the rear are what hold all three of the uh, main pieces together the horn the body and the base so these four in the back don't have anything to screw to until we put it back on the base if we had the two short ones for the front up here we could do that but uh, I'm pretty sure I left those in the van so we're just going to take this thing back down to the van and reassemble it I got to cut old hose off right here this is a little vacuum lead for the choke pull off and it was so brittle it broke when I pulled it off
So yeah, what happens is when you start it, you got full choke, and as soon as it sues vacuum to this pull off, that opens it up a specific amount, and then the mechanical part of the choke linkage takes over. So this just opens it up that initial startup, so it's not over choking. And this is a later model carburetor, I think 64 or 5 is when they started using that. The earlier uh, carters, same design, but instead of having an external vacuum pod, it was actually inside the carburetor, so just a very minor difference. All right, let's uh, go back out to the van. Hopefully we'll get to try this out before it gets too dark. We're losing light as we speak. So yeah, if you're assembling one of these just snug these screws down. They don't have to be tied at all. You're dealing with a uh, cast aluminum and plus with these extrusions or protrusions, whatever you want to call them, it is going to be fairly easy to wreck that if you put your muscle to it. pressure on it to crush the gaskets a little bit. You got that gasket up here and then a base one. Now from the factory one of these front screws had a brass ID tag on it that have the carburetor information on it but it's not uncommon to see it uh, missing like this people don't bother to put them back on you'll still be able to get a kit okay though because if you're working on one of these just look for a kit for a Carter BBS and you'll get it the kits come with gaskets to do like four or five different versions of the carburetor. It's a braided vacuum line. That's something you don't see that very often.
you know you can't see this from up there but this is the uh, idle and fast idle cam that I'm putting on both the uh, idle and fast idle screw adjustments are on the throttle and they rest up against that This rod here works the accelerator plunger and there's three holes on the throttle and you use one of those to operate that. Ooh. Usually you just put it back in the one you pulled it out of. If you don't remember, kind of like I don't right now. Just pick the middle one and you can adjust it from there because that's what it is. It's an adjustment. If you go one way you get a longer stroke on the plunger, you'll get more fuel. And go the other way, it'll be a shorter stroke and you'll get less fuel out of the plunger. So you just adjust that as needed if you have a hesitation problem when you're accelerating. We're going to have a slight vacuum leak because of that choke pull off. I didn't grab a plug for it. I'll try to cover it up with my finger but I don't think it'll be serious enough to be a real issue for the time being. Yeah, this is the manual part. I shouldn't say manual, it is an automatic choke, but it's a mechanical part. There's a spring in here that as it gets warm, it pulls the choke open. And uh, I think we might be ready. So the first thing we'll do is hook up the battery, hook up the fuel pump, and see if we flood out or not. Okay, we're not losing fuel out of it, so that's a good sign. If I had my flashlight, I'd be able to look down there and see if the accelerator plunger is working. I forgot my flash. Doesn't really sound like it is, though. Well, we do have fuel up there. If it keeps going, I may not have that choke adjusted right. Not choke. I may not have the float adjusted right, it may be too high. It's not flooding. Let's see if it'll start.
Okay, that is better. I remembered I had my little Harbor Freight flashlight in here. Let's see if I can do this. It is pushing fuel, although it should be doing it on both of the jets. Yeah, I'm not sure if... Yeah, there you go. But I don't think it's doing it on the other side. I may be expecting too much of it. But it does look like I need to lower that float level a little bit. That's the risk of eyeballing it like I did. Sometimes you have to do it again. Start it up real quick. First hit. Okay, so if I want more stroke on this, then it needs to pull down further in the desail position. So that'll give us more right there. So, like I said, it's, it's getting dark. I'll call it quits pretty soon, but next time I'm down here, I'll readjust the float and bring a piece of hose for that choke pull off. Probably bring some coolant for the radiator and see if it holds or not. Fuel pump would help. I may want to check the timing before I screw around with that carburetor anymore. Although I do still need to adjust that float. But I'm seeing a pretty good solid squirt out of that, especially now that it's readjusted. So I'm wondering if that hesitation is a, a retarded timing. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Vacuum Advance isn't hooked up. Of course, I don't know if this hose is any good anyway. We'll give it a try. But I'm about to call it done anyway because uh, I don't want this thing to get too hot not having any coolant. Yeah, I'll just run it on what's in the carburetor right now.
still a hesitation there, but that did wake it up some. So, a lot of good progress, guys. I think this thing's going to move on its own pretty soon here.